everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Um, as promised, uh, a couple of you asked if I would do a tutorial on how I bound the hardcover um, journals. So I'm going to do that. And um, I don't have the inserts ready for this yet, but I'm going to prep my book, get my inserts made, or my signatures, and then bind them in. So I kind of wanted to show you how I got the book ready to begin with. Uh, now, the the method of binding that I used, uh, I learned a little tip from Eva, uh, and I will put her link in the tutorial. I believe it's Eva Spade. And um, I will put the link to the uh, tutorial, actually, that she did um, over at Sophie's notes she had posted, and she uses packing tape. Uh, gummed where you wet this and then uh, uh, use some brown craft packing tape. So that was a trick uh, tip that I got from her and I'm so thankful that she shared that because I would have never used that. Um, so anyway, I got two different books that I'm actually working on and I always uh, of course get the the book out. But um, I'll show you a little uh, tip that I have learned along the way. When you're making your journal, um, you want your pages to be the same size as the book you pulled out. Uh, you know, if you just toss this or, or if you even lay it aside and then you're trying to, you know, measure where your pages go, uh, the best thing you can do is just measure this. And then you're right on target of how, what size your pages should be. Okay, so this one here is about a seven and a fourth by five. So that's how I'm, that's the size that I'm going to make my pages. And I'm going to leave this note on here. Uh, my spine, what I do for my spine is I simply measure, you can measure this, which it ended up being about an inch and a half. Or you can measure in here, you know, kind of guessing but the best thing to do is measure your spine here and then uh, do it that way so I have a piece of it's not it's just a lightweight chipboard it's not um, it's not real heavy or nothing and you can use heavyweight chipboard it is just as you know it, it would only work better probably so um, what I do is once I cut my uh, chipboard to the size I want, which this one was uh, one and a half by seven and a fourth. Uh, and I always kind of put it in to make sure that it is the right size. Before I ever do anything, you want to double check it. Best way to check it is to see how it lays in. If you're real close to the sides, I would probably take a little bit off, but I always try to close it up and make sure that when I close it that it's not got problems, you know, uh, closing. So that's just another tip for you. Save yourself some uh, time when, it, you know, messing up, especially once you've got your um, uh, signatures with your spine put in. So um, anyway, so I've done that. Then I always find my center. And if you are got an off, you know, if you've got an off uh, number, the easiest way to find your center is just to cut you a piece the exact same size. Just cut you a piece of paper, take it, fold it in half, and then find your center that way. Just mark it with a pencil. And once you have done that, and I'll just mark this again. I've erased all my lines, but that's my center. Then what I do is I just, this one is actually going to be a two signature uh, book, so um, what I usually do is I get my center on my ruler, and of course center would be right here, and then I count one, two, which makes it a fourth inch. If if you want a half inch in between your signatures, then you'll do it differently. I like to have a fourth inch. So, um, well, it'll actually be a half inch by the time it gets done. I take that back. Uh, so I go one, two, which two eighths, which is two lines, and I make a mark, and then I go this way, one, two, make my mark, and that actually gives a half inch in the middle. So, um, uh, there is that, and I just do it all the way down. I just kind of make a mark 
and make a mark and I do it down here. So then I'm going to draw my lines to kind of get me straight with my signatures. Once I have just kind of made, you know, made my center mark, counted two eighths over and counted two eighths over. And that's just what I do. I put three in there and then I just simply draw me a straight line between the, between the lines. So once I have got that ready, then I find where I'm actually going to make my holes and mark it. So I take my piece of chipboard and I like to go a half inch up. So I go a half inch up and I just draw me a line across so that it goes over both, both of my lines. And then I do the same thing here. I flip this around. I get my half inch measuring a half inch up, make a line across. And then for the center, I like to measure, I mean, with the ruler and mark my center. So, if you and once again, if you if you've got an off number and you can't find your center, if you'll just take your paper that you have cut the same length, just put it up against there and then just mark it mark it a line across that that will be just as easy you know than trying to figure out where half is you know if it's that three eighths or an eighth or you know and you can't figure out what's what then what I do is I try to get rid of my lines I get rid of my center line and I get rid of these lines that I have drawn to make a straight line down to keep my uh, little uh, where I'm gonna put my holes at straight and I just erase it. That's what I do. Just kind of get you eraser and just erase some of it. Okay, so then I'm ready. Okay, so then I I will be ready to get my uh, next step. So anyway, so I've erased. Oh, and I do put. I always like to put where the top is so that I always get it straight. Okay, top and bottom. Okay, so that one will be ready for that book. Alright, and then on my little book, I've done the same thing. I have gutted the book, got it out, um, found my... Now this one will just be a one signature. It won't be a two. It will just be a one. Uh, I measured my spine and it came out to right at about a little less than an inch. It's a, about a, oh, through seven eighths, or it's uh, right at uh, three quarters to a seven eighth of an inch. So, and uh, that shows an inch, but I always like to put a little less. So I have put this one at seven eighths inch so it's not quite an inch I lay it in there it looks perfect to me and I close it up to make sure that it's not too big once it kind of gets closed up it's gonna put a crick in it so then what I do is I take my 7 eighths inch and same way if you want to find center just cut a piece of paper 7 eighths inch fold it in half find your center just lay your half open and find your center so anyway, I've got my center marked, and on this one I would have done the same thing. I just find center, and I mark my center. I go somewhere in the middle, and I find my center, and I mark it. And then down here I find my center, and I just draw a line and mark it. Then I take my ruler and I line up my marks to make sure I'm going to get a straight line and I mark it down. Then I take my ruler and I'm measuring a half inch up and just draw me a line, flip it around, mark a half inch, draw me a line, and then I find my center in the middle. And then I just take it and I just mark a line across. And that is where I'm going to put my holes for my signature to go in. That way I'm lined up straight. 
you know, I've got the same amount on each side, and, and it'll just work out perfect. Then be sure and mark your top for top. Okay, it's, it's really pretty simple. So uh, anyway, so I'm going to get my signatures together, and then we will come back in, and I will show you how I uh, get the signatures in. Okay, so I have my signatures finished now, and um, we are going to bind them in this in this book. Now, uh, I have a little piece of cheesecloth, and I always um, first line, once I have gutted my books, I just line my piece of uh, cheesecloth, and I, there's no certain size to cut it, I just kind of... Uh, put lay a piece down and just um, you know just cut so it's not a not a big um, ordeal there how how big it needs to be I just really am wanting to put something there that will adhere to the um, this piece and then of course the piece that I'm getting ready to to put in so Okay. Okay, that looks fine. And then I'll cut off a little bit of that ex uh, excess here after a while. Okay, so now I am using Fabri-Tac for, for that part. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I have my piece uh, ready and marked. And now I'm going to use the uh, crocodile, and I'm going to use it on the little, the little hold one there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out where I have marked uh, my pieces to go. Now I am going to link uh, Eva, her video, in the description box because the gummed packing tape oops I'm having a hard time seeing that I've got the light off so that it won't uh, whoops I missed that a little bit so it won't uh, glare so now I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing my my marks but I am going to put Eva's uh, video to her binding in the description box because this helps tremendously now I never did use the um, the crocodile to set my holes in now I have never done that now I don't do it on my on my in inserts because I don't want the hole that big but uh, I, I am doing it on on this one right here because I just find it just makes it a lot easier. So that was a tip that I that I uh, have gotten from Eva that I really really and the gummed packing tape that was something that she used that I did not. So um, of course, just a reminder that the spine is uh, on this I have measured it it's an inch and a half by seven and a fourth and so I have cut this for okay so I've got my insert this is going to be my first insert and I want to make sure of course that I've got my pages exactly where I want them before I get it ready to bind Okay, and then I just, I grab one of these, uh, I'm going to reach over here, I'm going to drive, a, uh, grab a couple of these little quilts, uh, quilts, uh, clips, and I just want to make sure I've got my pages nice and snug where I want them and my bend where I want it. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of clip that and I'll clip it up here. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to get this center marked here, and I am going to use my 
uh, when I the, while I was working on my uh, signatures, uh, I got my Arteza triangular ruler in, and I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm going to link that video that I did of the Arteza products that I got. Um, I will link it in the description box, so if you want to see that, um, it will be in the description box because this ruler is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I love it. It is now a must-have in the in the craft room. So uh, I reviewed several products from Arteza, and uh, like I said, I'm going to put that in the description box so that you can uh, see that. Okay, so I have marked top, and this is going to be my first signature, so I want to make sure my holes are in the same place. And so I'm just going to kind of see my line peek through the, the holes there. I want to make sure I'm lined up on my paper. I can see my line there. Oops. Okay, and then I'm just going to mark where I want to punch my holes. Okay, there we are. <coughs> okay, so here goes. I grab my uh, needle. All right, so I'm just going to thread a little bit of that through. Going to get my little Tim Holtz paper pierce here, here, and I'm going to start in the middle. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to make sure I've got my top here, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of set it in there. All right, there is that. All right, then I want to poke my top hole out. And this is so hard to really video this because your hands are just, your hands are just everywhere <coughs> when you do these. Okay. Oops. And when you can't get the needle to go through, you just want to be sure and line your pages up and get your paper piercer again and get that in there. That way you're not poking any new holes. So you don't you don't want to be poking new holes. Okay. All right. Okay, and I always kind of pull it a little bit tight here, that way. Okay, that way it's kind of in place. All right, then I'm going to poke my bottom hole here. All right, and I do kind of hold this edge with my... Uh, finger so that my pages don't slide and kind of get out of out of the way there out of sync or out of alignment I guess you should say okay and then to go back into the center I always always go ahead and get that hole prepared again now I just went back in the very same hole that I started Okay, so there is that, and I just kind of pull it tight, and you pull it away from each other. Don't pull it this way. Just pull the strings away from each other, and that will tighten up. Then I'm going to have a string on one side of this center and one on the other. Okay, and then I just give it a nice tie, and this one here, I'm going to always give them a double tie. And this one here, I'm just going to put a a uh, thing in the center of it a little a little nice little bow there okay and then I'll leave the strings long enough 
just in case somebody wants to tie something on them or glue something on them. Okay, so there is my first signature in. And all it is is it's going in this piece of chipboard. All right, and then I'll usually clip this together if it's possible. And just take that one off. All right, now I'm ready for my second signature. Okay. And I should have went ahead and made my holes. I didn't. I should have went ahead and made my holes here with this. I got that put in there. I just want to make sure my... My pages are where they need to be. Okay. Just get them kind of nice and, and even there. And then put you a little clip, paper clip, or just any kind of clip. Now you can buy these little uh, clips there at Hobby Lobby in the fabric department, kind of where all the needles and all that is hung. You can purchase those. Okay. So then I'm going to get my ruler and make sure I've got it right in my fold, and I do. I'm going to draw me a line, okay? Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and mark this, and like I said, I probably should have marked that before I actually bound my other, I think that's usually what I end up doing. Okay, then I'm just lining up my my top and my bottom here so that this is going in the right place. Okay, so I'm just going to mark, mark, and mark where my holes are. Okay, so here we go, and I'm going to get poked in the, poked in my center hole there. <coughs> I'm going to restring my thread. Now, this wax cord I get at Walmart uh, in the jewelry section. It's just wax cord, comes in a little package. Okay, and it's pretty inexpensive. Okay, and then I'm going to get that on there. And my thread too. Oops, I got a really long piece of thread because it was the end of the end of my uh, roll. I'm going to clip some of that off. Okay, and then I want to poke my other hole at the top. Okay. Okay, we're going to be coming on this side of it now, going... Okay. Now, if you want your... Uh, if you want your uh, tie, where well you tie it together, to not be on the inside, then all you do it is opposite of the way I'm doing it. Instead of running your, your thread from the inside out and going through, you'll run it from the outside in. And that puts your tie on the outside of it. So, Okay, and I'm going to poke my last hole here and get it in my card stock or my uh, chipboard. Run that through. Okay. And then going back through the center hole, I want to just kind of move my thread over. I don't want to catch any of that thread. And I just want to get back kind of Get back in there, make sure. I usually can tell because I can you can kind of see through the hole, and then I know that I've got plenty of room for my needle to come through. That it's there's no paper in the way. Okay, so there we are with this, and once again I'm gonna kind of pull these away from each other to tighten it. And making sure my this center string is in between the two tied pieces. Okay, give it a double tie, and I'm just going to put this a little bow. Alright, 
and then clip it. All right, so now I've got my signatures in my chipboard. Okay, and then I will erase kind of where you can see top. I just give that a little erase. I erase all my lines. I'll go in and I'll even erase my pencil there. Get that erased, and I'll do all that here after a while. But, but anyway, here is my signatures in. So then what I do is I take my gummed packing tape. Now, I found this on Amazon, and I will have this in my favorites list is where I'll have this. Now, this comes in a really huge roll, so uh, it will last a very, very long time. And I will use it definitely. So I bought the big roll. Um, so what I want to do is I want to cut this straight here. I'm just going to put it on my uh, paper trimmer. Make sure I'm straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of center it up here. I want it to be even with the white right here. That's what I want it to be even with. I don't want it to go over that. And then I will take my pencil... If I can find my pencil now, there it is. All right, and then what I'll do is just mark it here where it's going to be um, even with this white here. Because what happens is I want to this not to be showing because I will be covering this with some kind of pattern paper. So, and then it will go over it will just go over this packing tape. So, so I'm going to cut it. Okay. So I've got that cut. And then what I do is I just use, you can use a sponge, you can use anything that you would like if you have this gum packing tape. But I just have water on a, on a brush. That's what I do. And I just, you don't want it soppy wet, but it needs to be, I mean, it needs to be wet or it just won't stick. But you, you don't want soppy. You, you don't want it so soppy that it takes the sticky off. Okay, and then I, had, I will just even it up kind of where the same amount is going to hang over both sides. That's kind of what I want. And because it is gummed, you can move it. It's not going to stick immediately. So you will be able to move it. And I know I need to... There we go. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just press it down. And then if I do see that I'm not stuck somewhere on the sides, then I will add a little bit of glue. But for the most part, this is going to stick. You're not going to have to worry about it coming up. All right, so now I have prepared the spine for my insert. All right. So I would normally just let that dry. And I may do that before I uh, actually glue my insert in. So I'm going to let this dry and come... Okay, so I'm good and dry, so now I'm going to set the, um, the insert in. So, what I do is I do use Fabri-Tac for this, because I know the Fabri-Tac, you know, is going to be able to, to hold exactly uh, the way I want it to in a binding. So, I uh, just use my Fabri-Tac, and I do give it a generous amount on this chipboard. I even run it across the threads. Okay. So, there we are. That is good and glued. <coughs> okay. Okay. Alright, so, then I'm just going to just center it up right in my book. I just make sure I've kind of got the same amount on both sides 
of my uh, of my spine. I just have to kind of judge it by looking, you know, both sides here. And once that I am pretty sure that I've got it kind of exactly where I want it and it looks straight. Because I can move it around for a little while. It's not going to dry so fast on me that I can't move it around. Okay, so I like, I think I like where it's at. <clears throat> okay, then I'm just going to start pressing it down. Start pressing it down. And I, and I look like I'm about the same up and down. I like to have the same amount of tape showing on both, both ends. And I'm just going to press it down. Okay, and then I'll go to my center as well and just press it down the center. All right. Now, before I do anything else, I am going to let this dry. So, as soon as it it gets dry, I'll, I'll finish up and show you what I do um, after I put this in. So, all right. So, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're good and dry. And so now, this is the last step that I do before I actually cover uh, my uh, uh, book covers here on the back. This is the last step that I do. <clears throat> so what I do is I just take, uh, I, what I do is I take a piece of my wide and I literally just cut it in half. And then I will end up covering this piece right here. That's what I want to cover because I do not want to put paper clean to here. And I don't want to uh, leave it like that. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take it clean up again to the edge of the white there on the end of the book. I'm going to get my pencil and I'm going to draw my line. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing for the back. And I just get my straight edge here. And I'm going to go up to where the book is, the white of the book. And I'm going to mark here with my pencil. So I'm going to go cut these. I'm going to put a B on here for the back. And the reason why I do that is just in case this is a little bit longer than the front. Then uh, I, I'm not cut too short. Okay, so there is the back. Okay, and then here is the front. So, once again, I'm just going to get my get my water. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to run my brush here on my on my uh, gummed packing tape here. Okay, and I'm just and I want it to bump up as close to the book mm, as I can. So that's something that I definitely want. I'm going to flip this around a little bit here. Okay. So I just bump it up as close to the book as I can. And just rub that where it'll dry. Now I don't worry about this because it is going to cover, my paper is going to cover where you can see this bump right here. That's how far the paper will cover. Um, it, it, uh, yeah, it will just go to, to right here. And then what I fill in will be cheesecloth here. Once I have taken my pattern paper and I have put it down then I will put cheesecloth to kind of hide a little bit of this right here. 
Okay, so then I'm going to do my front the same way. Get my uh, brush here with just water. And just get that gummed up. And I'm going to butt it up as close as I can to my book, staying there between the white. Okay, and that is it, girls. It is just really that simple. <clears throat> and I'll just rub that, rub it dry a little here. And that is it. I mean, and that looks really nice once you, once you get this papered with some of your pattern paper, though. It looks so nice. It just looks so nice. And then your book will lay flat because you've left plenty of room, you know, front and in your center here that it's not going to just be bulked up something horrible. So, anyway, I don't know what paper I'm going to choose yet. Of course, this will be uh, a little fuller when I start putting tags and whatnot in it. But, uh, uh, anyway, that, that's basically it. That is basically it. And once I find the paper that I choose for my uh, inside covers there and all, I'll get it uh, put to, uh, you, t uh, you know, get it the, the video posted. Now, here is my little one, and I'll just do this off camera. But I have basically done the same thing. I'll have my, this is a little tiny spine. My pages, I have cut uh, what this was, four by five and three quarters. Here is my little uh, center that's going to go here. I've already punched the holes. I've got my top marked. And then I will actually just take this. And I've already got my holes marked there. And I will be punching it through and setting that in. And uh, putting my little tape piece in there. Oops, I take that back. This will go down first. This will go down first, then this will go in. And I will, of course, get my signature on there. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll just take a little piece of that um, tape and butt up right against my, my book pages. And, you know, it's going to be that simple. It's just really that simple. So, uh, anyway, ladies, I hope that that was a help to you. Uh, don't forget to go check out Eva Eva Spade's um, YouTube ch uh, channel and her video that I will have linked to her binding because that was very helpful to me. I I've never thought about using gum packing tape. So, um, that was a real, real uh, help to me uh, for something really easy to kind of reinforce that spine. So anyway, ladies, have a great, great weekend, and I will catch you in the next video.